province. But when we talk about what this means, it's something really, really important. It means for the first time in the history of this beautiful province called Manitoba, more than 200,000 kids your age are going to be able to make sure that they have food each and every day. Is that something you guys can be proud of? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Right on. So yeah, there's a bunch of words on the page in front of me, but that's basically it. Every child matters, right? And that means that every child who shows up to school should be able to learn, right? And every kid who comes to school should be able to play sports, right? And every kid who comes to school should be able to read books and to be able to make friendships and to be able to have a really great day, right? And in order for us to do that, we want to make sure that every kid can eat food and no child is hungry. So we want to thank you so much for letting us be here and really, really hope that you Actually, maybe we could talk about a new word. Do you know what accountability means? You're about to find out. Very <laughs> smart. I love that, right? Accountable is like, it's almost like a promise, but it's the other half of a promise. If somebody makes a promise to you, then you ask them to keep it, you're holding them accountable. So can you make a promise to me? You hold us, as your provincial government, you hold us accountable on this promise that we're making here today, on this program that we're announcing, okay? You say, you said every kid in Manitoba was going to eat at school, and now it's up to you, the government, to make sure that that happens. Is that something that you can do? So don't let us forget it, and don't let any future government in Manitoba forget it either, okay? All right. Miigwech, merci. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Premier. That was really exciting news. Uh, to talk a little bit more about the Universal Nutrition Program, we're going to invite the Minister of Education and Early Childhood Learning and my fellow Northeast NDP MLA, Nello Altamari. Thank you, Minister Schmidt. I also have words on the paper, and I do promise that I will say some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. I do love what our Premier said about accountable. That means holding us to our promise, right? Right? And how important that is every day when we're at school and also when we're at home. I can tell you, and I used, I used to work with many of the people that are here today, okay? Ms. Herbst, Ms. Cross, way in the corner, Mr. Morrison over there, Mr. Drysdale, Mr. Bruce, Ms. Boyd, Ms. Mitchell, everybody. You know what they had in common? A desire to create the best learning spaces for students in our school division. I used to work not here at the school, but in the area, and took great pride in that. And one of the things we took great pride in is feeding kids. And we had one partner, consistent partner known as the Child Nutrition Council that we apply to every year to get support for that. And I can tell you right now, the very, one of the very first things we did to be accountable was we got rid of the wait list for the Child Nutrition Council that had hundreds of schools waiting to get support. That was eliminated right away by us. But we said that wasn't enough. Every kid in Manitoba needs nutrition. Every kid needs some consistency when it comes to food <laughs> security. And I can tell you, I see a lot of nodding heads and it's great to see because we care about your experience at school and we're going to make sure it's going to be a positive one. I can tell you out of the $30 million, 21 will go directly to school divisions like yours. Another 9 million will go to key partners like Child Nutrition Council and Harvest Manitoba who we're really excited to partner with throughout this. I right now want to thank all the staff the people that work for you to make this place the special place that it is. And I want to thank our community partners who have always been and will continue to be an important part of the work that we do in our public schools. I wish you all a great school year. I still get fired up at the beginning of the year. I don't know if you could tell that. <laughs> but I do want to say miigwech, merci, and enjoy the rest of your day and school year. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 
Thank you, Minister. We're now going to uh, hear a few words from our superintendent, Sandra Herbst. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning and welcome. Bienvenue, Bindigan, once again to Donwood School. A very special welcome to Premier Wab Canoe, Honourable Minister of Education and Early Childhood Learning, Nello Altamare, and the other MLAs and distinguished guests who are joining us today. I am very pleased to speak on behalf of River East Transcona School Division, and I'm joined here by these incredible students, their teachers, their principal, Mrs. Fair, their vice principal, Mrs. Amansky, the chair of the board of trustees of our school division, Colleen Carswell, and trustees Brenda Bage, Sherry Hansen, Shannon Hebert, and Keith Morrison, and the senior administration team, Jason Drysdale, Shannon, uh, pardon me, Karen Boyd, Tammy Mitchell, and Mark Bruce. I would also like to express my gratitude to the people whose hands have prepared the meal that you're about to eat according to the Canada Food Guide because in our program in our school divisions we are following the Manitoba School Nutrition Guidelines which include all four food groups in our meals. I have to tell you that as an educator I could spend the next few moments highlighting research that links access to healthy nutrition with improved student outcomes. Yet today, I believe that the most compelling evidence comes directly from our students. Yesterday, on that very magical first day of school, I sat with five of you right here in the library, and we discussed the importance of having food when you're hungry, and how nutrition nourishes both our bodies and our minds. So instead of quoting statistics, I want to share their words with you. And I invite every adult in this room to listen closely, not just to what these students have said, but how they teach us. For as educators, I can tell you our greatest teachers are often our students. When we pause, observe, and listen to them, we become better at what we do. Talia, who's sitting right over there with that beautiful smile, this is what she said. When you have good food to eat, it keeps you healthy and you have enough energy so you are not too tired to run around, especially in physical education. But listen to what she said next. Also, if you have food regularly, you don't have to eat too much at once because you're not sure when you're going to eat again. How about Carrie? Carrie's right there in the front. Food helps you to learn because then you can focus on your work. Carrie, I think we need to put that on a bumper sticker. <laughs> Cora, Cora's sitting right there. Nutrition gives you energy to keep going through the day because otherwise you wouldn't be able to do the fun activities that the teachers have planned for you. And sorry, there you are. Eating healthy food is good for you so you can think. When you are hungry, then it is hard to think or figure out the answers to the questions that teachers ask you or to solve problems. And I don't only mean math problems. That's what he said. And Alec, right over there. You can't survive without healthy food. You could get sick otherwise. Also, when you he eat healthy food, you stay alert and you can understand what is going on in the classroom and when you go outside to learn. Those are their words. I didn't alter or refine them. Members of our school division have been working diligently to create and implement a comprehensive nutrition plan that maximizes the funding that we've received from the government for this purpose. This is a responsibility that we take seriously. And as we heard the Premier say, we feel part of that accountability. Because all of us in this room deeply understand that as Talia and Carrie and Cora and Sari and Alec so eloquently shared, the impact of nutrition goes beyond just satisfying hunger. It fuels our 19,000 students' ability to learn, grow, and thrive each day. Their words remind us that access to healthy food is not a luxury, but a necessity, one that plays a critical role in their academic and personal development. And so in RETSD, and in partnership with the province of Manitoba, we believe that together we are investing in our students' learning and well-being. And when we do that, we are together investing in their futures. We are building stronger and healthier communities. Thank you. Thank you for those 
Thank you for those beautiful words. Are there words? <laughs> Thank you for those beautiful words uh, from the students and from Superintendent Herbs. Uh, that wraps our uh, formal part of the uh, speaking portion of the announcement. So we'll now open it up uh, to questions from the media for the Premier. Or, or any Super yeah. or the Minister. Well, I think I'll speak not only for Donwood because we represent 42 incredible schools in this area of the city, and I would tell you that the money that we've received is adding to and amplifying the funding that we ha have received in the past. And so what we're able to do now is, as we heard the Premier say, allow more access to more food more often. And I would tell you that that would be the greatest difference. Thank you for the question. Sure. Well, what I would say is the money that we received, which is over a million dollars, can't not help but make a difference. Because when you add that kind of money into a budget, you are going to be able to, as I just said, buy, purchase more food for more students so that there's more access. So in some of our schools, well, I would say this, in all of our schools, we've had some kind of food program in the past, and we are looking forward to augment that and to amplify that. And for some schools that have been specifically identified, all of the students in those schools will have access to breakfast and lunch every day. Uh, that will depend on the season, that will depend on uh, availability, and that will also uh, depend on our food purchasing cycles, but absolutely. For the Minister, uh, hi everyone. I've been around for a few years and we know that in many schools uh, we've had nutrition programs right across the province, maybe concentrating in Winnipeg School District. It's nice to see you see it here. Um, but there's a ratio, and explain that. I'm no restaurateur, but sometimes uh, I'm finding that talking to superintendents uh, around the province, that the challenge is not on the availability of food, but it's on the logistics that in some cases is the conversion uh, of a school where you need to see a kitchen. Um, that uh, it's also staffing issues as well. So can you talk Perfect. about that ratio and where you landed on that 65 35 whether or not there's flexibility for school divisions on that, because in some schools it'll mean a different level of nutrition than in other schools, depending on where we're at in this province or in this city. Talk about that. So uh, I can tell you, as a former school leader, a lot of it depended on the needs of the kids that we had in front of us at the time. And so when you talk about even a commercial grade kitchen dishwasher that washes the dishes in two minutes and disinfects and is ready to go. That's important in some schools, especially if you're serving a hot lunch. The other piece too is making sure that you have a refrigeration that is at a particular temperature and that's done with commercial grade appliances. So some of the dollars will go there. A lot of it is dependent of course upon the school leader and what he sees or needs. But I'll tell you Richard, the biggest, the biggest piece that I want to accentuate here is a community that it creates when you have a meal program. It invites people in that are school averse, families that had bad experiences growing up, that are dealing with intergenerational trauma, the food program, allowed them to come in, allowed them to see what was available, and to trust the school again. Couldn't that was the biggest thing. Couldn't agree with you about the ratio. Well, the, you know, the ratio piece is going to be flexible depending on school need. I mean, the best people that know that, school leader and the teachers, right? And so that's why we're saying, here's the dollars, you decide how you're going to do it. We'll give you this ratio as a baseline and then go for it. And that just as you need it. So if in some divisions they need to spend more on the logistics, on the freezers and all that, on the staffing, there's flexibility. The minister's message today is there's flexibility. In that. Flexibility and know your community. And the schools are the best people that know their communities. Minister Keel, so confirm, is that in fact the ratio? Or is it the 
Well, it's going to depend, uh, Maggie, again, on the needs of the particular school. The, um, we, we, ratio. correct, correct. Uh, we, I mean, it's always good to have a bit of a parameter and then you go from there. That is my expectation. That right now, every school in Manitoba has a meal program. What is the norm in terms of what exactly is going to happen? I know there's different things. The norm is usually a, a breakfast program to start the day. If you were a community school, you had a little bit of extra funding to do maybe offer a bit of a, a snack program throughout the day, too. That was uh, very much like a rolling cart that went through the building after, uh, before and after recess, depending on the need, right? The child should have to work with it Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm going to tell you that the work that the Child Nutrition Council did informed our decision here. Because I can tell you one of the very first things we did when we were elected, we got rid of the wait list. We also moved them back up to 20% of coverage of food costs for schools. Previous government had cut that down had allowed a wait list to occur, and had cut the program down to 17% of food costs. We were not going to have that happen. We did it right away, one of our first acts in government. Did the minister also talk about, as particularly for Sin here, is that you've seen over the years a lot of um, private companies uh, come to the table, right, wanting to help out. And so sometimes when the government moves into that space, the private will say, ah, you know, we don't need to be there anymore. What's the signal that you're trying to send out to all those other groups, including the corporations that like to invest in community when it comes to the nutrition? They were going to continue to invest. I can tell you we met with Cisco. Cisco right away wanted to meet with us and say, how can we be partners here? And we sat down, we came up with a plan, and they're still going to be very involved. Right now, they actually have a real partner in the province that's going to help them provide whatever nutrition is needed for each and every one of these people in front of us here today. Schools are exemplars. They're the best at recycling, the best at uh, composting, the best at integrating an environmental education. Mm -hmm. um, all you need to do is visit a school and you'll see it in action. Th that will be in imminent. Uh, we'll have more to say later on. So another we'll have more to say later on. I d you just also need to understand, too, that all the school divisions are participating in this particular, in the, in the nutrition program. All 37 school divisions are doing this, have plans, put them in place, and are being supported by the government. And the First Nations schools. And the First Nations schools as well, MF NERC, and the unaffiliated First Nations schools throughout the province. Right. Some are already serving hot. There's a range there, depending on the... On the and in, in this, I agree that there is that flexibility to be able to do that. But um, there are pockets of this province and this city where, boy, a hot meal in the morning for breakfast, the snack, and at noon, so much. Absolutely. That's why... But we used to have... Uh, we have community schools. They were identified, we had about 50 on the old definition, now we've increased that to over close to 100 schools now that can get to a point where they're offering hot meals. Again, the schools will be the ones that will decide when and if they can get that done. And before the other question to Steve has for the Premier, you made a promise sure. during the election about more and more Manitobans making it for their 18th birthday. To put it into context with this announcement within your aspirations, The point of this announcement is not the food. The point of this announcement is the children in our province. You, we go to Dauphin, Manitoba. Up till this year, the meal program there was run by the Dauphin Friendship Center. 
volunteers there, hundreds of meals prepared for school kids in that community each and every week. We're talking about the future of our province and we're leaving it to charity and to volunteers. What we're saying is that no, that's the role of government. This is why we come together as a society to have a government is to do things like build roads and hospitals and have an education system that makes sure that young people are prepared for the next generation. And when we think about the challenges that we see on our streets every day, that we read about in the media, that we see in the healthcare system, education and young people reaching their full potential, getting a little bit of a lift by having food along the way, is one of the biggest change-making investments we can make for the future of Manitoba. So yeah, I respect all the questions about, you know, how many apples per child and dishwashers and food handling certificates. That's absolutely the news of the day. But the real story here is for the first time in our province's history, we're going to make a commitment that every kid who shows up for school is going to eat. And 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, everyone in Manitoba is going to be better off as a result. And if you want to do the historical trajectory, this is directly informed by Every Child Matters. This is us looking to the lessons of the residential school survivors and asking for every kid in Manitoba, no matter which background they come from, how do we make things better in the future? Sure. For Minister, <laughs> uh, his question's not going anywhere. We know, <laughs> we know what he's going to ask. <laughs> Yes. Hey, as a parent, the toughest part of being a parent practically is getting the kids ready for school in the morning, including packing a lunch. Governments can't do everything. That's going to continue to be a challenge for many parents out there. But this is about making sure that you, the parent who sends your child to school with the packed lunch and, you know, you, you're doing everything right, this is about making sure that they are going to be able to learn because the other child in the classroom who might have otherwise been disruptive, they're going to be able to eat too. That's right. And it, it, like it's, we're talking about tens of thousands of kids here, it, but it's going to vary. And you know what? The packed lunch gets left on the counter one day, and the kid who otherwise is you know, not participating in this program, needs to participate in it along the way, that's fine too. Yeah. <laughs> Without further ado. Well, so that's probably the best way you could have framed that question, right? Um, so it's big news. I'm hearing all these federal politicians talk, and it seems like they're thinking about themselves. What are we hearing there that's going to help you pay a bill this month? What did we hear that's going to help us fix health care here in Manitoba? So again... I'm looking out for Manitobans. We're trying to help. We brought the gas tax to zero. That's putting money in your pocket right now. But we're not a rich province. We need a federal partner to be able to, to do things. Again, there's announcements about school nutrition programs that have been made. But you know what? This is all provincial money that we're talking about here right now. This was from the provincial budget. And don't get me wrong. Like, I'll work with whoever is there. If Eric Poliev wants to come and do CrossFit together, I'll do that. Just like I went for the run with the Prime Minister and did the walk with Jagmeet Singh this week, you know, I'll work with whoever's there for the best interests of Manitobans. But I want to see real ideas, real plans, how are we going to help people deal with the cost of living? How are we going to fix health care, cut emergency room waits here in Manitoba? We're putting in the work at the provincial level, but we need to hear the federal leaders talk about you, the people, and put you first. Um, some provinces have uh, called for a reduction in equalization. I know it's a big, uh, it's an important uh, item in Manitoba's uh, revenue picture. Uh, have you secured any payments from any of the leaders on, on 
Well, I can tell you that it's something that I raise with uh, the federal leaders, absolutely. And what I tell them is we need stability. Like, I got big dreams for Manitoba, right? A second ago, I said we're not a rich province. I want us to be a rich province. And you're the generation that's going to make that happen, right? But in order to get there, we need stability. We need stability when it comes to equalization, when it comes to the Canada health transfer, when it comes to other federal, provincial deals that we do together. And so the big thing for us is we don't need any more cuts to health care. I think we've learned that lesson very clear here in Manitoba uh, under the previous government. We do need real tangible steps to help people get by month to month. And again, this is why we have governments, to help people get through the big challenges that we can't overcome on our own, like tackling inflation, like tackling the cost of living, like responding to interest rates being as high as they are right now. So we here in Manitoba, we found one way by cutting the provincial gas tax that puts money back in people's pockets and that helps people in a way that they wouldn't be able to do on their own get through a difficult inflationary period. But we just need stability at the provincial level, so I, or the federal level, rather. We need stability at the federal level. So there's going to be a lot of speculation and politicking going on, but again, let's focus on the people. Let's focus on the kids. Let's bring forward some real plans that are going to make lives better. And, you know, that's what I'm looking out for. Premier, a question about the protests yesterday during the motorists and motorcyclists. Um, police have said that they were not present visibly as a form to de-escalate and respect protesters who have requested this. I'm wondering, is it appropriate for police not to be fully or visibly present at protests because organizers requested matters of public safety? Well, this is the first time I've been asked about the broader topic. So the first thing that I want to say is uh, I want to express compassion for the woman who died at uh, Fort Rouge Park. And, you know, I, I've spent time in uh, Roseau River over the years, and I come from a community like that. Same language, same culture, same traditions. And, you know, I just feel really sad that a community member like that, very young as she was, um, had her life ended. And so a lot of people are concern about somebody like that living without shelter, losing their life in the way that uh, took place. And I just want to extend condolences to everyone that's feeling like that and to say that that, that affects me too. Um, there's an IIU investigation underway. We need to respect that process. And when we talk about what took place at Portage in Maine yesterday, like it's just awful. Like I get that people watch the social media videos and it's like a, it's a talker as we say in the media world but as somebody who's leading in the public sphere that is terrible we don't want to see that and how i take it really what i saw yesterday we got to do more on homelessness like that is what i took out of that because this issue is manifesting in different ways and it's becoming very divisive in our society and I think politicians have a responsibility to, one, not amplify divisions in the society, but two, try to heal divisions in the society. And we have levers like the one we're talking about today, feeding kids, that we should all be able to get behind. And we need to do more on homelessness. I think our government has done a lot so far, but it's not enough. It's nowhere near enough. Since we've taken office, we've housed more than 1,100 households in Manitoba. Right, probably 750 of those uh, were people experiencing, or households experiencing, or households is the wrong term, but we're trying to talk about a family unit that was experiencing homelessness, right? And, but when you look at the scale of just drive down some of the major thoroughfares in our city and you look at what happened yesterday at Portage and Maine, it's not enough. And so that's why we're committed to working with the other levels of government and the not for profits. And you know what? I ask a lot of the team of people that I work with and you can ask any of the MLA standing with me today that my expectations are very high and I'm going back to them this morning and saying you know what it's not good enough everything that we're doing we need to raise it to another level because again I'm gonna turn to you when you see somebody who's homeless is that right should we be fixing that if somebody's hungry on the street should we give them food should we find them a place to stay if they have a mental health issue, should we try to heal it? Yes. Right? If you can't explain something to a child, then I think you have a problem with your policy. 
And so we can have an argument about the right approach to deliver on the consensus that we just arrived at with these kids, but I don't think there's any denying that yesterday's events, that recent things that we've seen in our province are calling on all of us at the leadership level to do more to address a humanitarian crisis. Premier, how close are you on flipping the switch as far as, um, as a lot of ministers, a lot of people go to Houston? You're doing a lot of work behind the scenes to kind of prepare for what's happening. How close are you to that strategy where you're going to really be, the wrong word is probably aggressive, but it's uh, a lights on type of approach because right now you folks are doing things but you really want to do things. How yeah. close are you to being able to activate the plan? Well, again, since we took office, more than 1,100 households house. We got about 100. And we we do, we do. And like you and I are not that far apart in age, so I'm going to say that it's not a light switch, but it's remember when everybody got those dial lights installed in their homes back in the day? Yeah. It's a little bit more like that. We're turning the dial, we're adding housing, we're adding outreach, we're adding the ability to treat mental health in community and in voluntary fashions, in involuntary fashions along the way as well. And what I, what I think I'm saying is like, the dial is turning up, we're cranking up the effort to deal with homelessness and stuff that we've seen this week just underlines that we gotta move a lot more quickly. So again, action is happening, but man, we've gotta do a lot more. Uh, Premier, today uh, business leaders are expecting approval of $530 million settlement of the province Well, I think first and foremost, when we're talking about kids coming out of, like youth and care, when we're talking about kids from the child welfare system, it's our collective responsibility in Manitoba to help ensure that they can get on a good path. So every single person who qualifies for the settlement, I hope that you can access financial resources and I hope that you can use that in a way that improves your life. Maybe it's to go to school or to put a down payment on a home or to just help you keep your head above water during this time of uh, inflation and interest rates. So first of all, with the settlement moving ahead, I hope that folks can get uh, access to the resources that are earned or uh, deserved rather. And um, in terms of what does it mean, we're, we're writing a historic wrong here, right? Like successive governments uh, oversaw this policy. Uh, the previous government um, legislated away the rights of these children to, to go to court. We obviously took a different approach. We just said, all right, let's just address this and then hopefully we can move forward. And when we talk about young people being able to graduate, when we talk about addressing homelessness, again, having a better approach to child welfare, big picture, is going to help us move forward on those goals as well too. Well, you know, you go back about uh, 10 years ago, I was involved with you know, one of the universities and um, I can tell you back then it was very clear the role that international student tuition played in helping to fund uh, a university in Manitoba and that was a decade ago. So when we carry forward today, the bottom line, what does this mean? This means that there's going to be more pressure on tuition for domestic students. There's a bunch of intermediate steps I can spell out for you there, but that's effectively the bottom line. The federal government has taken this action and you have you know, Manitoba students heading to university and college who could potentially be facing higher tuitions as a result of this because the money has to come from somewhere, right? So this is a federal government policy change. I think for us, we want to be there to work with the universities to address this challenge, but we are addressing a tough fiscal situation here in Manitoba as well. And so I hope that we can collaborate with universities and colleges uh, to go to the federal government and say there needs to be support to accompany the changes that you've implemented. We've shared that message with the federal government and um, 
as the universities and colleges get a clearer picture of the impacts that they're facing, we'll continue to be there to work alongside them. Alors, finalement, en français, nous sommes très, très, très contents d'être ici à Donwood aujourd'hui pour lancer notre programme de nourriture pour assurer que tout le monde dans le Manitoba, que chaque enfant a l'accès à la nourriture chez l'école pour qu'il pourrait apprendre, jouer, créer des amitiés et puis surtout avancer leur vie comme Manitoba et Manitoba. Merci beaucoup.